how will we use what we learn at the South Pole or other analogs? Well, here is a look at an autonomously deployed remote control lunar greenhouse. The habitat is enclosed in the lunar transfer vehicle and it, it lands and becomes part of the habitat. Okay, here we uh, have the lunar transit vehicle uh, setting down and uh, the uh, thrust blowing the regolith around and then it uh, shuts off. The habitat has to drop its engine and walk over top the engine because ultimately it sits all the way to the ground before it deploys the inflatable structure so it's got to lose the engine package and the uh, landing legs are hydraulically operated and uh, allow the habitat to walk. There it sets down to a lower level so that uh, it's not standing so high in the air. This is the lunar tractor. It's being deployed and it'll be used to uh, bury the, uh, the lunar habitat. It's autonomous and can be run from Houston. It's in uh, three sections and uh, it's battery powered. Here the tractor uh, leaves the vehicle and, and goes to the site where uh, ultimately the uh, habitat will be constructed. The tractor digs a, uh, a pit in order to uh, stockpile material that it will later push back over top of the habitat, over top the inflatable modules. It's just the most efficient way to uh, move material instead of trying to deploy it on the surface and scrape up material and then cover it. The tractor can operate autonomously, but it, it's probably being run from uh, an operator in Houston with a virtual reality uh, helmet on. Here it's recharging its battery, which it'll have to do constantly through the digging process. The tractor will go through a lot of energy in digging, digging this, and, it, uh, and the habitat will provide that energy in the form of methanol fuel cells, the methanol shipped from, from Earth. The methanol goes through the fuel cell and it converts into electricity and, and carbon dioxide and, and water. Here the habitat is uh, walking into the pit. Once it uh, locates itself properly, then it uh, retracts its legs and lowers itself all the way to the grade surface and uh, the doors uh, are uh, blown off the habitat and the inflatable modules are uh, uh, extended. Cabin pressure deploys these, uh, these inflatable modules. Once they're inflated then the, uh, the tractor begins burying them with a ultimately a meter of regolith on top of uh, the inflatable structures. The digging process and bearing occurs as quickly as possible because this uh, inflatable structures are unprotected at this point. Micrometeorites can damage them. Here the, uh, the nose cone blows off and the covers around the uh, solar concentrators are blown off and uh, the solar concentrator deploys. This is the power system. The uh, location at, uh, on the rim of Shackleton's crater will allow for at least 75% of the time to have natural sunlight. There's the tractor converts into a lunar rover once its function as a tractor is no longer needed. The habitat uses fiber optic lighting of the concentrated light to move it to the greenhouses and to generate power and that's it. I don't know about you, but I'm impressed. I'm Emma from the Moon Society.